Hello, this is going to be lab three, first order transient circuits. All right, so to solve this, we're going to need to figure out our initial value for the voltage in the capacitor, final value, and then the time constant. Then what we're going to do is say that VC at T is equal to a function that's just going to change exponentially from the initial to the final value. So VC at zero plus V, yeah, VC at infinity minus vc at zero times one minus e to the negative t upon tau. So this is an expression which is going to, when we substitute in t equals zero, we're going to have one minus one. So this term gets killed and we've got just vc at zero. When we substitute substitute in t going to infinity, then the exponential's gone and we've got a one for this bracket, meaning that we get vc at zero plus vc at infinity minus vc at zero, in other words, vc at infinity. So now we just need to find these three values, vc at zero, so the initial value for the voltage on the capacitor, vc at infinity, what its final value will be, and the time constant tau. The initial value, before the switch is closed, they tell us is zero, it begins fully discharged. Fully discharged, no charge means no voltage for a capacitor, so we've got vc at zero is zero. For the final value, in that case, the there's no more current going through the capacitor because we've reached steady state. So that means all the voltage, all the current coming from this voltage supply goes through this resistor branch here, which is in parallel with the capacitor. So that means we're going to have some voltage divider to figure out the voltage that would be across this. It would be the same as the voltage across these ones. So that'll be VC at infinity is equal to r pair over r1 plus r pair times v1 where r pair is equal to r4 in parallel with r2 which is then in series with r3 okay then we've got the we need to figure out what the time constant is time constant we We'll use tau is equal to RC, where R is the resistance seen by the capacitor. You can think about forming a Thevenin equivalent for the network that's the capacitor sees to get this into the equivalent form of just one resistor. Or you can just think about the combinations that you would do if you were to find the Thevenin equivalent, which would be this resistance in parallel with this resistance. So in other words, 100, 100 ohms, so R, R1 in parallel with what we've called R pair. Okay. So if we go and work this out, this parallel combination, R, so a 47 in parallel with a 100, turns out to be almost exactly 32, so that when you add it to a 68, you get almost exactly 100, which means kind of conveniently the parallel branch resistance here has a has a has a resistance of 100 which is the same as this one so we can do the rest of this fairly simply so that means that this voltage divider ends up being equal to 100 over 100 plus 100 times 5 volts which is equal to 2.5 volts for the final value and the time constant will be another 100 in parallel with 100. So 100 ohm in parallel with 100 ohm. Uh, the time constant resistance, I should say, the resistance to use for that, which is 50 ohm. So tau is equal to 50 ohms times the capacitance, one microfarad, so we end up with a time constant of 50 microseconds. And substituting all of those things in, therefore, Vc at t is equal to 0 plus 2.5 volts minus 0 times 1 minus e to the negative t over 50 microseconds. All right, so there we have it. That's our analytical, 
analytical expression for the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time. Next thing to do is to build this in multi-sim and test whether or not we see this, this kind of function working like this. So here is a circuit already laid out in multi-sim. It's all the same kind of circuit components you've seen before. The only new thing is the switch. You can get this particular style of switch under the basic group and then under switch. And there it is right there. That's that switch. Um, you don't have to use this switch. There's other ones that you can do. So one that's kind of fun is if you go under all groups and then search for switch or just look in the 3D virtual one here. There's a switch here, which um, which kind of looks like a, which is sort of wild. It's got like a, a light switch sort of thing. So you can go to the on position or the, or the off here at the bottom. Yep, totally up to you which switch you want to use. So what we're going to do is try to examine what's going on here on the scope. And let's use the, the Tektronics scope from the lab. So we hook that up, hook that up, and now we can fire up the simulation there, turn this thing on, and toggle the switch to see this exponential rise and fall. So it's happening a little bit too fast. In order to capture it, we have to get the trigger to find just that one event. So here we're going to go into the trigger menu. We're going to change the mode to normal. And then we can close this. Let's just double check. OK, so we need the level of the trigger to be up here. So it's going to find the rising as long as it goes up above that level. So let's, there we go. OK, so we got the trigger working there. Now the problem with adjusting the time in this setting is the scope is still trying to acquire things right now. So it uh, it's a little bit more convenient to set it to single sequence. And now we've got acquisition complete. So the scope isn't going to be trying to acquire more when we're messing around with the, the timing here. Okay, so there's our rise event. In order to compare this with the value that we calculated analytically, we're going to need to do a little bit of, of work on this to see what value we expect after a certain amount of time. So the first thing that we want to do is say, okay, a time constant of 50 microseconds going from 0 to 2.5 volts. Uh, one, one way to look at this is to, uh, we can find the final value of this by sort of seeing which value it's moving towards. And you can kind of pick it up from the plot being one volt per division. So we've got one, two, and about a half. So it looks like it is indeed rising towards 2.5. You can do a little bit better with the cursors if you plot a, a longer amount of time and see where it's steadying off to. But uh, for measuring the time constant, what you need to do is see the the height that it gets to find, find out how long it takes for it to rise let's say one time constant worth of of value here's a way to do that so we'll say we're going to find out what voltage we would have after t is one time constant and then look for where the signal gets to that voltage so if we have a time constant value of, of 50 microseconds, then when t is 50 microseconds, we should have 2.5 times 1 minus e to the negative 1. And if we evaluate that, we've got 1.58 as the voltage there. So 1 minus e to the negative 1 is our 63%. So after one time constant has passed, we've moved to 63% of the final value. After two time constants, it's 86%. After three time constants, 95%, etc. So uh, the one time constant value is a, is a good one to look for. The voltage is still changing pretty quickly there. So we can zero in and be a little bit accurate in that. Okay. So we're going to look for where the voltage has risen to 1.58. We want to know when this has happened. So let's first go to channel 1. We'll move this thing down to there and then increase the, or decrease rather, the voltage per division. Then we'll look for where we've got a rise up to a, a difference of 1.58. So we'll 
first do voltage uh, voltage cursors here. Get that one to there and see where we get a delta of 1.58. So we've got a delta 1.52, delta 1.59. Okay, that's pretty good. So we're now looking for a time difference, which is going to get us between about there and about there. So we'll change our cursors to the time ones. Move in to that spot right at the start of where it's rising and move the other one to it was about there I think yeah so I think that's mostly it and we've got 55.4 microseconds which is pretty good to our calculation of 50 microseconds so only about 10% off but does give us a rough idea of what the time constant is and that's how you do a time constant measurement in multisim and compare it to your analytical work. Thanks for watching.